What is going on, guys? Welcome to the Wednesday Night Live Stream. Today, I have the one and only Robert. How are you doing today, buddy? Hello, I'm good, Devin. Thank you, man. It's good to be back, man. Good to be Excellent. Back. <laughs> Excellent. It's good to have you back. Um, yeah, man. So today, just before we kind of get into it, just kind of sure. a quick overview. You, sir, are going to be starting a tank again pretty soon. Yeah, man. Super excited. It's getting close. Um, so when I moved uh, across the country uh, mm -hmm. to Tennessee, I uh, moved into an apartment. And so we're going to get a house pretty quick here. Uh, April is the time. And so... Yeah, I'm chomping at the bit, man. It's been, like I said, I've said this a bunch of times, but it's just been so long since I've had a fish tank, and, like, I miss it so much. Um, Jones so, one. Oh. you're going through a build, obviously. Everybody knows, because you yep. put, put it everywhere. Um, <laughs> sure so I figured, yeah, man, it would be fun to talk about it, because I'm just starting, like, total in the infancy of just, like, conceptualizing what I want. Um, I, I know the, the kind of exactly, like, what tank I want, and not necessarily brand or anything. I know the shape. Um, what kind of shape? Uh, definitely a lagoon, man. So like same width and you know depth, um, or you know width and length, whatever way you look at it. But yep. um, square footprint, and then the height probably nothing more than you know twenty four to thirty. Uh, so pretty shallow. Nice. So shallow lagoonish style tank. Yeah, man. Uh, I want to. I want to definitely do the um, the mangrove thing. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'm like debating whether I could you know build the tank and do you know like build the display around the mangroves or because I have this idea, I think I told you, I just want to do like a ginormous sump um, mm -hmm. and play with equipment, swap it out and do that and just plumb it into a tank that's like half the size yeah. where the, the fish will be. <laughs> and I can like, you know, grow coral and do my uh, my artsy thing in there. And then I can have, you know, a nice big vat to play with equipment and stuff. Because, um, yeah, I know I'm going to, you know, I've been doing that kind of stuff for years. I've kind of always had places to do it and whatnot. And now that I'm setting it up for myself, I want sort of like this, you know, mini fish lab, mini fish studio, you know? <laughs> nice. It'll be awesome to have that. Yeah. And then okay. uh, build on to that, you know, we can do all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. Uh, well, here, you go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, in the comments, someone said Robert from where? Well, this is Robert from Bulker <laughs> Supply. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, before we get into the topic... So how, how is things going to bulk your supply? I mean, it's a whole new kind of chapter for you. I mean, you're like the perfect person because I know you're taking over a lot of the social media side of it. Yeah, thank you, Devin. Um, it's fun, man. It's great. Uh, so last we talked, I don't know, I think it was early December. Uh, at that time, I was focused on um, sort of written content for the site. I was doing some marketing stuff. Um, and since uh, at the mm -hmm. end of the year, um, they promoted me into social. So... Essentially, yeah, um, I'm working mainly on Facebook right now. Uh, there's quite a few things that, um, you know, we want to try out this year, which is super exciting. Um, but, yeah, man, that's uh, that's been my focus now, doing all kinds of, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not interacting too much, like, in terms of answering questions quite yet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really focused on getting, like, a good post schedule going, getting um, promotions for people. I'm doing these daily deals, which we started. Uh, it was really cool. So um, I'll have a regular deal that's, you know um, – intended you know for the Aspirus TV group members um, as well as you'll see them on the business page but um, it's intended to kind of uh, you know in incentivize some activity on there and you know give uh, special promotions to those people so um, lots of awesome deals for those who interact with all the BRS content so yes man like. definitely <laughs> join it nice. hashtag Aspirus TV group um, it's <laughs> it's a direct line to me I'll be there every day all day so um, yeah you can see you can uh, there's a Facebook account you'll see on there that I interact with. Go ahead and friend it. Um, uh, definitely would love to have you, man. The more the merrier. <laughs> Perfect. And I know yeah. you guys post like daily deals and stuff in there, so you can get some really sweet savings, which you got to be in the group for. So, yeah, okay. no, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right? You got to yeah, be the gonna, deal. They're going to be specific to Facebook, so you won't be able to see them anywhere else. Um, and they only run for 24 hours, so they'll be all limited time stuff, so where it's like mm -hmm. um, basically just you know active members and active users. So, We'll benefit oh. from it. Perfect. Hey, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yep. People love the deal, so I've got to get in on it. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're going to be managing the Facebook group. Like, what else is your role? What else do you do there to help kind of build um, the BRS community? Yeah, so there's all kinds of stuff in the works or in the plans. Uh, right now, my hands are full with uh, seriously managing Facebook. And, mm -hmm. you know, just there's the the regular business page, just Bulk Reef Supply on Facebook. And then we have the Ask BRS TV Facebook group, which is huge. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, there's <laughs> there's a ton of members, uh, and oh, yes. um, you know, there's a ton of activity, and so we like to ensure that we stay on top of that because I mean, that's the whole concept of the group is mm -hmm. to you know um, interact with the community and get feedback and vice versa and, and help people out with their fish tanks. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so that definitely keeps our hands full. There's me and another fella, this guy Adam. Adam's great. He's been super yep, he's awesome. Good. Uh, he's been doing it for a long time, yeah. Um, and so just working with him on kind of creating a plan for this year. Uh, Randy actually works with us a little bit too. It's Randy mm -hmm. from the videos. Um, so he works with us a bit. Um, and yeah, man, so the plan is after we get uh, some of these promos scheduled out, I'm going to move into giveaways. So then I'll have giveaways for the mm -hmm. year. Um, and then I can start working on more creative stuff. So um, I, I'm doing this. Uh, I just started this week. I want to do like content wrap-ups where – I pull in like all the promos, all the videos, all the cool posts from uh, whether it be you know forum, the group, mm -hmm. even just Facebook accounts in general. Just really cool stuff, and just sort of highlight it like like you're reading Reddit or something. Just all text, um, nice. and just make it easy to kind of sift through. I think that's a cool thing, especially for guys like me who mm -hmm. um, would just like I want to get to the point. You know, <laughs> just tell, tell me why I'm yeah. here. You know, here's all um, here's all the highlights of the week. Here's all the good stuff. Give yeah, because I mean, you know, you're busy. You only got a few minutes to sit down mm -hmm. and and you know dedicate the mental space to fish tanks. Uh, you know, I wanna mm -hmm. I wanna see what I want to see. I have to oh. sift through all the muck. That's fair. Um, that's fair. That's good. And then eventually move into like forums. Um, definitely want to get my hands on Instagram. That's kind of like my favorite social mm -hmm. platform. Nice. Um. Yeah, you, I mean, that's just one that I've just kind of always stuck with over the years. I have all this stuff, mm -hmm. um, that and Facebook, but I'm um, definitely excited to work in Instagram awesome. and do L some Lots photos. of eye candy. It'll be good. Yeah, that's what I want to do, man, is mm -hmm. once I get this tank built that we're going to talk mm -hmm. about, um, I'll have the ability to really set up some cool, you know, photo stations and do different things like that and uh, hopefully bring some of that neat stuff. Mm -hmm. I've been super interested. This is crazy, and I've never. I want to breed fish, man. Like, I'm really into yep. this. So there's this guy, Chad Vossen, who works at Bulk Resupply. Um, I posted, actually, a few, like, pictures of his stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> on my social media this last nice. year. Uh, he's just been really cool, and he impresses me with something new every time I go to Minnesota, like, just something really, really cool. And, like, what he does intrigues me. Uh, I talked to him a little bit about it. Uh, I've, I've had a, a good working relationship with um, – Sea and Reef for a long time, so mm -hmm. the fellow over there named Soren, he's really awesome. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, Biota is another one I've talked to a little bit about. They're a whole, you know, what they've got going on. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's intriguing. I just, I got to do it, man. I just don't think I, you know, it's a bucket list thing. So I think mm -hmm. build this tank, I'll set up a nice fish studio. The plan is to get like a, um, a neat basement, like a big, you know, unfinished basement. Nice. Build that out to the office, make it the fish studio, um, you know, set it up for filming, photo, all that kind of stuff. Oh, if um, you can find it, that's like the prime real estate to yeah. make all the magic happen. Well, it's kind of neat because, like, as we're looking for homes and stuff out here, uh, you know, I'm not used to basements. Being from mm -hmm. Southern California, um, they just they don't have basements out there, you know. Uh, there's mm -hmm. not really any weather to worry about. <laughs> um, and out here, like, all these old places have basements, even some of the newer homes. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, the newer homes, it's not as common, but there's a ton of older homes that um, are really, really cool, too. Like, they'll have, like, these – I guess they're custom homes. They're just, like, unique layouts, you know. They're not, like, so cookie-cutter. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm into that, man. I think it's cool. That's uh, fun. There's a lot, of, uh, a lot of places with a lot of property, too, so I can have my nice. my garden and all that kind of stuff. Nice. That's awesome. I, well, think we got a, I think we got a kid coming up here. All right. No problem. Stay, um, stand by. You talk to your people. Hold on real quick. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so the basement thing I actually find kind of intriguing because, at least on the West Coast, like, basements are a very common thing. So not having a basement, I guess, out east in lots of places, it seems kind of weird. I've just always had them. Um, but so today's topic, we're kind of going to start digging into, because Robert hasn't had a reef tank in a few years. I know he's kind of jonesing out. He's missing it. He's wanting a tank again. We're having a conversation of, you know, what all type of stuff should you be considering to start your new build, to start your new tank. So we can start to dig in a lot of that stuff today. Like as a new reefer, it can be very overwhelming, right? You know, how many bazillion things you got to buy? What do we got to set up? What are you missing? Um, if you guys saw the thumbnail for this video, that little floating tank, and I post that on Instagram as well. That is, um, <laughs> what is a basement? Uh, um, so that one's my buddy's tank that I'm helping him out with. So I just need a photo of like a empty tank just kind of for this one. But same thing. All the questions. What do I need? What am I missing? What am I not considering? All these things that you got to kind of consider up front to building your first tank, especially or even an upgrade, right? Like there's stuff you can reuse, some stuff you need new and stuff like that from there. So sounds like we got Robert back. Welcome I'm back. back. Thank you, guys. Sorry. She uh, my little one woke up from a nap and <laughs> ne needed some assistance. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. No problem. Uh, so. So yeah, find a new home. Is that where I was at? 
<coughs> so new home so obviously new home that will fit a new tank <laughs> yes uh and then have a cool fish studio then be able to mm -hmm. sort of uh branch out into a lot more creative social content uh which is cool it's exciting mm -hmm. um i want to get on the forums i'll probably do a build thread you know on reef tree um nice. well, on reef tree anyway for the, the new tank at least that's the plan um and then video man uh you know i want to i think i want to get back into it so okay. facebook is a cool platform <clears throat> just trying to give you your fix with the live streams, you know? Easy back yeah, <laughs> no, that's been awesome. Uh, thank you uh, for inviting mm -hmm. me on anyway. Uh, oh, always, always. Yeah, yeah, no, like, uh, I had a lot of fun creating video, and, you know, uh, for a long time I wasn't really sure, like, what I really, really liked about it, and now mm -hmm. it's like, no, it's gone, it's been gone for a year, like, I've really kind of honed in on the things, the aspects of it that I really like, and it's just... What do you like? What is it that draws you to creating content for uh, other refresh? Gosh, great question. Um, okay, so one, I mean you know, to help out, uh, you know, you get, once you get, uh, so much experience in the industry, it just feels like everybody you talk to wants advice or has questions. And so, um, it's neat to just sort of be a part of that whole, mm -hmm. um, grow the community, make it better, um, funner, happier, safer, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, get rid of the bad information, stop killing fish, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a huge one. Um, it's, it's terrible. You, I mean, I don't know. A lot of us have probably done it, but it's just like, uh, a ton of new aquarists, you know, everybody gets into this, like, it seems like they want to learn the hard way, yeah. you know, um, and there's just, there's like, now you have the internet and all this information that's really just a few keystrokes away, uh, there's just no reason for that, you know, um, you don't even, I mean, you can watch videos, you can, you know, <laughs> have guys tell it to you, you don't have to read it, you know. Mm -hmm. And everyone always thinks that they're the exception to the rule. That's a big thing. Yeah. That will happen to me. Yeah. Well, what's it, what's his name? Inappropriate Reefer? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, isn't, yep. that his, isn't that his whole stitch? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. No, well, I mean, I know that's how, mm -hmm. like, he the, he got the name and gathered it all around. Was he was he was doing these things on his videos that, uh, you know, he can uh, – everybody called inappropriate. Or that's the word yep. he probably deemed it. Um, <laughs> so, he's, yeah. He, he's a good guy. <laughs> uh, but in addition to that, in addition to helping people, you know, um, just the whole creative aspect of it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, working with film, editing the video, um, having sort of, like, a creative outlet is mm -hmm. great played music in a band for a long time, like 15 years, like a long time. Um, and so that was a big part of my life, uh, early 20s, uh, my teenage years. And then there was about three to four years of time where I really wasn't playing a lot of music and wasn't doing video, but then picked video back up, and it just uh, mm -hmm. it just brought you know, a side of me out that's, yep. I think, always going to be a part of my life. So The creative um, passion side. Yeah, yeah, and it feels good to be able to – do things that you love for a living. So um, I've always been really proud and really um, uh, grateful, I guess, mm -hmm. that I've been able to make a career out of something that I love so dearly. Um, yeah, exactly. You know, awesome. I mean, it helps, man. I mean, it really, really helps. Uh, but it's it sounds cliche, cliche, but, you know, you do something you love, you'll never work a day in your life. And True. You I have feel fun, like, right? It's not like, oh, it's work. It's like, oh, yeah, I get to make this today or do this crazy yeah, idea. Yeah, um, it's weird. It's it's never thought I'd be here, but it's cool that um, – I've kind of got to this point, you know, it's neat. It feels awesome. Good. <laughs> awesome place to be. So, yeah. okay. So now to the actual topic. Sure. So yeah. building your new system, what are your kind of some of your lesson learns? What have you had in the past for tanks that you're like, never again, or next time I'm going to change that? <laughs> yeah, that's a fun one. Uh, it's always like, um, well, next year, next time, you know, it's mm -hmm. always like that. Uh, you know, you learn something. With it. Why? I'm constant, constantly learning. Why did and, I get this? Why why did I order that? Or why didn't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. You learn so many things. And, like, with me, because I'm sort of uh, in tune with, like, the pulse of what's what's going on in the hobby, what's popular, and what people are liking, what they're using, hearing about successes, hearing about failures. Um, I, I kind of feel like I kind of go in these waves of, like, I don't have one favorite way to do everything. Mm -hmm. I just kind of want to try all these different things. Like, I want to give a, a good shot at, uh, you know, like a low-nutrient system. I want to give a shot at, um, uh, like, an LPS-only system, species-specific. I love anglerfish or, you know, frogfish. Mm -hmm. love to do something like that, um, like a predatory tank. Uh, so I just have all these. I, I guess it's um, ideas for the tank, like the ecosystems mm -hmm. that I want to I want to try, you know. Yeah. Um, and then the equipment side of it is there's, like, multiple approaches, you know, and it's cool mm -hmm. to kind of – get your hands on each one of those and, and figure out what the best way is for, for me, you know, cause everybody's different in the it's way true. they want to take care of a fish tank. It's true. Um, and so. a lot of these things, I mean, you just got to try it and learn it and try the different methods. I mean, it sounds like you're going to have a whole aquarium gallery and a half going on down there. <laughs> well, so. that's the plan. I mean, it'll be, you know, uh, slow, but sure. Um, 
you know, you need a whole in terms booster. of in terms of tips, uh, like big ones. I mean, I can go with like the basics, like you know, uh, plan ahead. Uh, what's it? Measure twice, cut once. <laughs> um, yep. You know, don't glue. You know, always dry fit your PVC. Um, oh, yeah. even when you dry fit, when you put on the primer and the glue, it's gonna push in a bit more. That mind. Do what now? It, when you put on the primer and the glue, oh, it's like it's like a loop. It yeah, softens like a it, so it'll actually go in further than when you're dry fitting it. Yes, 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 yes. So I uh, don't cut I've too definitely, tight. <laughs> I've definitely learned that the hard way. Um, mm -hmm. And I actually, I still have trouble with that. Actually, measuring P measuring PVC out like is not an easy feat um, because of that play. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you can do it like you know, you get it all drawn up and you know, in Google Sketch or something. You have it all planned out. You got all your parts. You know, your mm -hmm. math is. You've looked at this drawing or this sketch 500 times, and uh, still there's always you know there's some little elbow that's just not perfect, and then it'll bug you through like the life of the tank. It always <laughs> seems like every time I plumb a tank, there's like one little plumbing connection that I'm just like, because the glue's unions. on there. Unions, huh? unions. Yes, so you can unions adjust are great. stuff, there you change go. stuff. That's a good tip, man. Is use unions um, everywhere, anywhere, <laughs> anywhere, and everywhere possible. Mm -hmm. um, I like to think of everything as modular, so. Uh, you know, I think about. I was telling you this the other day, man. Is I really hate getting the tank all. Uh, I don't. I don't want to say that. I just want to say. You know, just building the tank uh, to a point where it looks nice. Cords are routed. Uh, you've got all the equipment that you want. You've got your lighting, and then some pump blows, and you're like, oh great. Yeah. And you spend, you know, you spend three hours, and you've got a new pump. It's like you ordered the pump. You got a brand new one to replace it, but mm -hmm. it takes you three and a half hours to get that stupid cords everything else unplugged and zip ties mm. clipped um so yeah uh, you know things like wrapping your cords use uh velcro yeah use velcro or something that's removable they have like those wire coils and all kinds of mm -hmm. wire tracks and different things i mean there's some amazing stuff people are doing these days with uh organization under the tank mm -hmm. um actually this was a really neat one i'm not sure <laughs> uh so ryan uh brs ryan he's building mm -hmm. uh he's got the brs 360 you know he's have this dream tank build he's doing on youtube and he just got the stand. Yeah. And man, he integrated. Did you see that? He integrated some like these. So it's like, man, we gotta find it. Uh, if you, if I don't know if you can find it on, it's on Facebook. Um. Oh look. Yeah, yeah. but there's stairs that pull out. So they're like these flat stairs that come out, and then they fold either direction. Mm hmm And it allows him, you know, to have stairs that come out the front of his stand. That's cool. Su super awesome. And um, I don't know. It was just a, it was a clever idea I've never seen. Um. So, yeah. Uh, the only picture I'm finding is the one in the palette, unless it's hiding in the comments somewhere. No, it was uh, it was before that one. Uh, that was the day it arrived, I think. Okay. So it would have been the previous one. All right, so I'll find it. Um, okay, I was laughing. Anyway. One of the comments that said they spent more money on PVC than any other part of their tank. <laughs> oh no! Oh it's, no! It, well, especially <laughs> if you go for like the fancy color pipes yeah, the, and all those he's, connectors. Yeah, he's a schedule eighty so. guy right there. You betcha. I've been there. <laughs> yeah. Uh. uh Lewis, new peer, started with a water box cube 20, currently building 100.3, almost finished, and now I went bigger. <laughs> oh, gosh, the bigger tank thing is hard. And you know what's funny? Uh, this is another conversation I've had recently, too, is like, so I've been doing this a long time, and I've kept quite mm -hmm. a few fish tanks, but nothing ever bi bigger than uh, 180, so mm -hmm. close to 200 gallons all said and done. And that was a freshwater tank. That was like mm -hmm. a, a freshwater sort of aggressive tank. Uh, 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago. So like it was like in my early, early days of um, of doing this. And, you know, I've I've always wanted – I think the big, biggest saltwater I ever had was like 0135. Um, and I've just always wanted a ginormous saltwater tank because the fish. It's not for coral at that point. Like coral are awesome, and I and then like I can – I think I've, I've – I don't want to say mastered, but I've got to the point where of like I understand how they grow and how to mm – -hmm stock a tank or manipulate it trim them prune them things that will grow nicely together that's sort of a skill that i really enjoy but i've mm -hmm. done that quite a bit so now i want to like i haven't really ever ventured into like really really cool saltwater fish it's really always been i guess what you call nano fish mm -hmm. um i think some of the coolest fish i had were like uh, you know angler fish i had a scorpion fish once the leaf scorpion which was cool mm -hmm. um those were both predatory though uh never had big angels i've had some cool tangs um, I had a copper band once, uh, some neat wrasses, um, nice. and then of course, you know, clownfish, the gobies. Gobies are probably my favorite. Uh, but yeah, I've just kind of always ventured, you know, so I'd like to 
get into the realm where I can keep these big, you know, big just fish. aggressive, really big reef fish. Yeah, I mean, some parrotfish, um, the angels. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, man. So that's kind of a. Uh, angels are tricky with coral, at least LPS. One of the things that I have yet to do, but the funny mm-hmm. part about it is, it's like I don't think I could do. I don't think I would. A tank over 200 gallons, man. I know how much work it is. <laughs> I'm just, I'm on that edge right now. Yeah. So. <laughs> Automation is your friend. I know you. I know your methodologies keep it simple, but like yes. this one is the first time I'm ever automating water changes on, and I'm so excited for it. It's just gonna yeah. make life a lot easier. No, I'm excited. I'm excited for you, man, because that is something that um, I've never. I mean, I've worked with like auto water change systems and whatnot, but I've never had one of my own tank in my own house. Mm-hmm. So that's probably something I will look at, look at doing with this new tank. Uh, so because you know I'm a father, I work. Um, you know, time is yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, time is a uh, is of the essence. So mm-hmm. probably something I'll look into this tank, Pro- and I'll probably will end up with more automation than I want to admit on the new yeah. tank. <laughs> um, well, the, the we'll thing see. the thing is. The more you automate, the less work you have to do, which means the more time to enjoy it, more time with your daughter, all that kind of stuff, right? Totally. No, I, exactly. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's right where the reason of why I would do it. Um, mm-hmm. I'm just going to put it together in a way where nothing is, like, hidden away or hard to get at. And what's cool is I'll have that luxury of, of sort of having, like, a studio-type lab place where, you know, a piano finish paint stand or a piano, paint, piano finish stand is not – exactly require like i'll probably be okay with an open you know aluminum t-bar type frame Mm -hmm. frame stand or something um big sump i can have exposed equipment and different things so Mm -hmm. um i think that'll help out a little bit in that sense of not being so frustrated with trying to access stuff and keep it nice and tidy and cleaned away you know so that's now that you mentioned that that was kind of a lesson learned from me on my last shell reef tank i had everything in a cable track along the back of the tank but to actually get a wire out to unplug something, it was still a bugger to take that thing off. And yeah, because like, you got to get all of them. And... Yeah, you got to get all the cords out of there to actually mm-hmm. do it or unwrap them. And then, you know, there are a lot of equipment has like the quick disconnects with all this DC stuff. You have the mm-hmm. controllers and stuff. So sometimes you're able to kind of get around it if you mount your controller logically and route the cords sort of together. What I've been mm-hmm. doing is is uh, is bunching like. Uh, so like if I have two heater cords, like I'll put the heaters together. If I have, you know, all the power heads will go on one, mm-hmm. um, you know, like reactor pumps is a huge one. Cause you're always taking it in and out. So that one I'll just literally just plug yep. right. You know what I mean? Manually plug it in. Don't even wrap that one up. Um, and then like probe, uh, probe cords, dosing lines, all of that kind of gets wrapped individually. Mm-hmm. So then it's not, you know, at least you, you know, you've got access to like, okay, I've got three Oops. cords here. It's one of these three. It's not one of these mm-hmm. three. <laughs> um, an- another thing I'm doing on my new build too, rather than routing everything to just one location, mm-hmm. I'm going to put a power bar at both ends of the tank. So stuff on this half can be plugged in that half, that half that you're not stretching and routing stuff everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I even ran another power bar down to where like my auto water change area is going to be. For did you did you pick out a, a power bar? I'm curious if you're doing something like industrial, or you're just going to go with like a you know a, just a surge protector. Like what are you going to um, use? Um, Generally, what I did in the past is ran it through a UPS and then plugged in like that. The Neptune ones plugged into there. Uh-huh. Um, so I still have all my Neptune stuff. So I got two newer ones and one older one. So I'm probably just going to literally put one of those at each location. Okay, then just, so the, the Neptune just, power, um, yeah. power centers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think it was I think it was you that uh, showed me uh, you did sort of a, a top mount on the power bar. You're plugging stuff straight up. Yep. Was that you? Yeah, that was um, a neat idea. I like that. I'm going to definitely use that one on this build. Oh, yeah, like even my, like I put a plug box, like two GFC outlets. So many people say don't use them on tanks. Personally, I always use them on my tanks. I've never had a big issue. Yeah, but, that's a, one of those. It's a catch-22 sometimes because if they trip, then you're kind of screwed. But then again. But on the flip yeah. side, I mean, <laughs> I have two circuits, your... so maybe I throw a power head on each one if one trips. Yeah, it saves your, your house Not a big deal, right? damage, yeah. Exactly. It saves me from getting zapped or electrocuted so i think it's yeah good. no that's that's a good one too i've, I've yeah. had a gnarly uh zap because of a fish tank that was not yeah, fun exactly water on the floor and everything it was not a fun time <laughs> now, now here's something else to consider um if you have a battery backup for your power heads if mm-hmm. something did trip you're still gonna flow in your tank you're not gonna lose anything it's gonna live for the day until right. you figure it out so yes there, there's a great tip to take away <laughs> yeah battery exactly. backups man especially in your power heads um, huge that, i think I, i've talked about this before but man like all this dc stuff like mm-hmm. I feel like it's not far away from being able to run your tank on, you know, just a Batteries. couple of amps. Yeah, and just like mm-hmm. 
I mean, for days, you know. Um, the heaters still don't seem like here. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, the heaters, yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one. Mm-hmm. Um, I still want to see, like, some solar-powered stuff. Like, people, yep. like, you know, oh. I, I know it exists, but, like, some, like, some, uh, like, power banks, you know, where guys mm-hmm. are, like, almost building tank off-grid. Or, okay. Uh, all right, sneak peek of this one because you brought it up. All right, all right. So, cool. uh, show me, show me. <laughs> a few years ago, I put um, four 100 watt solar panels inside my deck that literally just runs my landscape lighting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I've been toying with the idea of running, you know, like one of those thicker landscape lighting cables all the yeah, way like through the attic and down wire. the wall to my tank. Do I, I have like a couple hundred, three or four hundred amp hours worth of batteries for my landscape lighting, which is ridiculous and overkill. Um, but so if yeah, I could hook you... that up to my powerheads and stuff, those things would run for weeks. Be Dude, great. You should do it. That would be probably cool. that's that's a Devin move, man. That is a yep. Devin move. I want to see that video. Now you're on the hook for it. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's a future project once it's spring and nice. Yeah. No, that's neat, man. That's really cool. Um, so yeah. that'd be cool. Okay. Um, so lessons learned. So don't make oh, your yeah, wires lessons, a pain in the butt to get to. Lessons learned. What else have you dealt with on prior tanks that you're like, okay, that was a pain in the future. Um, let's not do that again. You know, one, I probably get some argument on this one, but glass sumps, man. Um, I, I'm definitely going to stick with an acrylic sump. Mm-hmm. I love, like, I'm a glass guy. I love glass tanks. Um, but working in the sump, man, I just, I'm too clumsy, and I can get moving fast sometimes, and I've had trouble before with glass ones, so I'm going to stay away from a glass sump. Definitely go acrylic. It's just less risk of breaking stuff. You know, you can be a little bit more aggressive down there. Um, you don't have to worry about hurting yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit of benefit to that. Um, one so, thing that I'm still toying with, mm-hmm. with is like a custom acrylic one, but mainly cause I like all the lids on all the chambers. So it'll reduce evaporation and moisture in the stand and all that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I've been kind of debating that route, so we'll see down the road, but yeah. I, it just keeps it all neat and tidy and concealed, which is kind of nice. Less sound, less everything. Yeah. That's what I like about them too, is not only the evaporation, but the sound, you know, it kind of keeps all that out and contained. Mm-hmm. Um, other ones, um, level the tank. That's a huge one. Yes. Level it, you know, uh, and and re-level it. So and then level it again. And then level. Yeah, you're gonna you're mm-hmm. gonna level it dry. Then you're gonna level it after the tanks on it. Then you're gonna level again when it has sand and rock. And then you're gonna level again when it has water. <laughs> okay, Just so so <laughs> semi pro tip on this one, um, because where I put my tank, there was a little bit of a carpet, like the tack thing on the edge of it. I, I knew it wouldn't be perfect. A... Yeah, it wouldn't be perfectly level. So I put some three quarter inch plywood underneath. And then the bottom of the water box has like a bazillion leveling legs. So I actually used a clear piece of glass and held it on the back so I could level the exterior legs and I could see through the glass which ones weren't touching. So then I could go through and adjust them all until they all were flush with the glass, right? So then I knew mm-hmm. it would be flat to my board. Hey, there you go. Good job. Yeah, that kind <laughs> of did that, Like you did that um, before you had the, t- like you did it. Yeah, just, the, the, yeah. So it was like roll the stand over level, roll it back. I did like 10 right, times right. until... No, you that's know, awesome, man. The perimeter was level, then I just made the middle match. That's a clever idea. I guess, what did you just use, like, one piece of glass and then went around? Or, like, how did you do it? Yep. Yeah, I just had, like, a big glass square from a table, and I just took it off and, like, <laughs> put it up. I oh, needed... it, wasn't, it wasn't the same footprint as the tank, though. It was, it was bigger. Um, oh. It was, like, two feet by two feet. It was, Or maybe or three feet by three feet. Enough to bridge <laughs> the gap between them. That is a big piece of glass, man. <laughs> yes it was hey it worked out handy but yeah, i needed no, a way cool. to level the middle right to the mm-hmm. outside so it was the only good way i had to do it no i got you i got you cool mm-hmm. um okay. yeah so, level's a big one i made that mistake a few times okay <laughs> um okay so as a new reefer somebody who hasn't had a tank before it can be overwhelming what kind of gear do you need what kind of equipment what would you say are the basics for someone starting their first tank you know you got your tank you know you got your heaters maybe a power head, your lights. What else are you missing? What else do you need to get? Like, what uh, do you... Let's just say like helpful stuff, like things yeah. that you may not think about. Um, mm-hmm. One of my favorites is tongs, big long tongs or tweezers, you know, long forceps. Um, yeah, man, those are... <laughs> you look at you, you got all pretty ones. Yeah, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, those are just like lifesavers. Um, mm-hmm. And they protect your hands too. Like I'm, uh, I'm the type of guy that sticks my hand in the fish tank. Um, when I see stuff wrong, I just fix it. Um, I don't necessarily worry about gloves and stuff too much, but I have been stung and gotten some weird irritations on my hands. So the tongs can help you avoid that a little mm-hmm. bit. Uh, what's another going to ATO? ATO is like essential. RODI is essential. Uh, I mean, if you want to be successful with 
I would say saltwater in general, but mm -hmm. especially reef tanks. Uh, I think an RODI is like critical. It um, is. Your oh. ATO, you can get away for probably three to six months before you get all pissed off, and then I, just. I would say bullet. even buy a cheap one, like just buy one. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. If your salinity is off, it's going to mess with all the other parameters in your tank. Right. So keeping your salinity stable is going to help everything else stay more stable, which is going to help you be more successful. And then, you know, uh, <laughs> top of the – people will scare you with ATOs. They're not as – they're not as flood-causing as people make them mm -hmm. think. I mean they do fail, um, but, y you know, typically they'll fail off. Um, I guess they, you know, it depends on which one, and they they'll fail both ways. But mm -hmm. um, as long as you're you're careful and you check it, you know, yep. don't let it run dry. Obviously, clean the, you know, I don't want to say common sense, but it kind of is, you know, clean the clean the sensors, clean the floats. Mm -hmm. um, Have a float valve then a sensor. Have that little dual there layer. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, buy a nice one. That's you know the oscillators. You can't really get much better than that, man. Um, mm -hmm. It's got the you know the optical digital eye on it. The floats. You got two methods of sort of water monitoring there um, or level monitoring, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's like, you know, with the maximum timer, most of them are programmed these days with, uh, you know, a, uh, Five a max, or whatever, like, turn off. Yeah, max yeah. fill time and then even a speed that you can adjust depending on mm -hmm. your tank size. So, you know, if you've got a big tank and, you know, you got your max fill at 30 minutes, well, you just set it to where it can only pump in a few gallons over 30 minutes mm -hmm. um, based on the pump speed. So, uh, a lot of them are foolproof. I wouldn't be too scared by them. Uh, yeah, they're definitely. It's it's well worth uh, the minimal risk that you're you know you're nope. putting yourself under. Agreed. And just saving you the hassle of walking by every single day and be like, oh, did it drop below the line? Um, it's just worth it. Uh, a couple yeah. Other, a definitely. couple other comments or stuff from the comments about people are saying like an ATO container. That's one. You know, make sure it's a decent size. So you're not filling it every other day. Uh, yeah, I mean, five gallons is kind of the rule. Sorry, uh, it's just uh, mm -hmm. this is one thing with like the foolproof thing. You don't want to be running your ATO out of like a twenty-gallon brute unless you I have. I just put a thirty-five for mine temporarily. <laughs> there you go. You unless you've got a couple hundred gallons where mm -hmm. you know you've got time before you drop uh or yeah drop that salinity out um if it stays on. So mm -hmm. yeah, the five-gallon jug has kind of always been the go-to five-gallon buckets. Um, and I guess yes, yeah, so you, you need that's part of the ATO in a sense of like an ATO <laughs> reservoir, but there is some truth to having a square one because they fit nicely under your tank. Yes. So a lot of five gallon buckets out there, a lot of those jugs are nice because mm -hmm. they're, you know, inexpensive, easy to fill, easy to carry. Um, but a nice ATO reservoir is, you know, if you like that clean sort of polished look, mm -hmm. um, yeah, having them square and slide right in is pretty nice. And it's more space efficient, right? Those corners yep. give you those extra couple of gallons. So yep, yep, yep. A couple extra days before filling it. Um, a glass cleaner scraper. That's one actually most people don't think of until they start getting algae on the glass and they buy one after the fact. True, a magnet. Um, yeah, magnets. Uh, you kind of can't go wrong with one of those. Yep. Um, I like the ones that are like a scrubber and a scraper. Um, flipper is kind of my favorite so far of all the ones I've used. I have one on all yeah, my Yeah, flipper is but... flipper's a good one. I've used that for mm -hmm. a couple years. Um, I like algae free as well. They've got a blade mm, attachment that works them. real nice. Yep. They're really nice. They use like a strong magnet. They're like up there with like tons of magnet strength. So nice and strong magnet. Mm -hmm. So even the the scrubber side of the Velcro that's on it, um, that's on your tank side, mm -hmm. the wet side, you know, the, the strong magnet pinches it on the glass effectively to where it cleans more efficiently than it would. Like, yes. let's say the mag float, you probably go over it f four or five times to get off just basically like a week's worth of growth. The algae free will get it in sort of one swipe. All right. So um, don't buy one that's undersized, right? Make sure it's oh, rated you for go. your glass. If sure. it's too weak, I mean, you're, it's barely going to do anything. If you have a nice strong magnet, it's actually going to cut through that grime and algae and get it off. Yeah. So, it's a good one. It's not about staying on the tank. It's about how effective that cleaner is on the glass. Yeah, exactly. Most, most of the time they'll stick. It's just they're not enough pressure to get off the algae. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's a good one from Kurt. Don't use lightweight sand if you plan to have a lot of flow. 100%. Sure. There you go, man. Uh, sugar sand's pretty, but here comes the yeah. sand dooms and the sand the, storms. The, the... the sugar-sized. Uh, it's funny that that stuff even exists because it is a big PIA. And everybody you talk to, you know, has made the, it's like, oh, it looks so great. White sand. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It is pretty. I'll give mm -hmm. you that. It's pretty. But it's just, 
with everything that we know about flow and how important it is to corals and the you know the type of flow that you need to put in these tanks and the shape of these tanks, mm-hmm. uh, they just don't lend themselves to you know having sand like that. Because I mean, naturally, the sand bed in the ocean is constantly moving and shifting and changing shape, and the same thing's going to happen in your tank, and then all that sand gets in your pumps. If we didn't have water pumps, it would be an issue, but we have to mm-hmm. deal with pumps. We do, and we got lots and, of flow. Yeah, so, so okay, so speaking of sand, do you go sand or bare bottom route on your next one? Oh man, I'm a sand guy. Uh, always have been, uh, and it's a look thing. It's not for any other reason other than that. Mm-hmm. What I will do on this one, which I've never been really, really diligent about, like I will clean the sand bed. But I'm the guy that like maybe cleans it once a month. Uh, I know, you know, in order to get a real pristine, nice white sand bed at all times, mm-hmm. uh, you're looking at cleaning that thing every week. <laughs> you just have, I mean, you just have to, and then do it in small batches. You know, so I'm gonna really try to. Uh, to be um, OCD about the sand bed and keep it mm-hmm. nice. Um, and I know it's going to help across the board with everything, um, but I've just always really wanted that tank with that bright white sort of Bahama sand. You know? It does It does look good. So, oh, it's killer, man. Especially with contrast when you have mm-hmm. like mature corals. and um, Yeah, I mean, it just makes a... It makes a, even like a brown coral look cool when the tank, <laughs> when the tank's clean. Are you, but like seriously, like if the tank's clean... Mm-hmm. And glass is scrubbed, and it's nicely stocked. Like, oh, it looks great. You know, green star polyps, some gorgonians, and some leathers, and mushrooms. Dude, you got yourself a kick-ass reef just mm-hmm. because you keep it clean and tidy. It's true. Clean you know, you're a nice reef. Giving yourself, like, I don't know, like four or five brownie points are, like, you know, mm-hmm. just definitely boosting your tank up by simply scraping the glass and keeping the bed clean. So the glass, for sure, definitely. Now, the one interesting thing that I'm just – thinking about myself now is because I'm going to automate water changes. How often am I going to vacuum the sand? Not enough, I'm sure. So Yeah, I, this is, it's, it's just such an annoying thing to do. <laughs> so it really it's is. probably going to be trying to see what kind of creatures I can get to clean the sand for me. So I don't have to do it, which would mean, you know, you can get sand sifters and stuff, but again, yeah. they'll bury your corals. You got stuff on the sands and you got to keep stuff on rocks. And Yeah, huh. I've done the, um, the, the starfish or the sea stars. Um, mm-hmm. And then, I, you know, Nasarius. I love Nasarius snails. They're just the coolest things ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then conches. I've had conches too. They uh, oh, sort of Conches bull- are awesome. Yeah, they'll bulldoze through stuff as long as it's the right kind, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, between the Nasarius and the sand sifting sea star, generally speaking, it stirs it up enough. Mm-hmm. Um, but you always have those places that are tucked behind the rock or like just places where they won't go mm-hmm. and stuff. Just it just piles up there, man. It's your your dead zones, you know, your dead spots where everything just sort of congregates. Yep. No, it's true. I don't know. I still love it though. I think its tank looks better with sand. Pers- personal choice. Yeah, yeah, but. definitely. And I've seen some beautiful bare bottom tanks. Like mm-hmm. it's, it definitely can be done. Um, I just like sand. And then there's like you open yourself up to to different animals. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of animals you can't have without sand. Uh, you know, your I think your biodiversity is going to be better yeah for lack of a better way i mean it's just gonna you have more diversity in the tank uh just because of the animals that can live in the sand mm-hmm. um uh, i don't uh i just i can't imagine uh a situation where a tank with like a huge macro and sand is gonna have less diversity than a tank that's bare bottom with sterile rock yeah you know, just, just coral you know i mean that's true I, I don't know for sure i haven't tested it myself never looked but i'm just mm-hmm. Everything I know about it tells me that you probably um, are going to harbor all those microorganisms a lot better. Yeah, no, 100% well. Okay, so got your new tank. You sound like a Sandman. <laughs> <laughs> um, so brand new tank. What's your method? How do you like to cycle your tanks? Uh, well, shoot, I've done it a couple ways. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, usually uh, just a chunk of fish food, man, and sit back yep. and relax, you know? You do the slow cycle, eh? No, no yeah. bottle bacteria or any of the accelerated ways? I mean, yeah, I've, I've used plenty of that stuff, but mm-hmm. I still always give it, like, I'm a four- to six-week kind of guy. I'll just let it go longer than it needs to. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I'll – I mean, it's always been – ever since I started, it's kind of been, like, transferring tanks. Mm-hmm. So there's kind of been, like, a plan in the place. This is going to be my first time uh, sort of just starting from scratch. That's kind uh, of yeah. – you know, that's a neat thing. So um, – does make my... it easier when you could just move stuff from an established system because you're bringing so much goodness in – yeah, there's always stuff been that. Too, no, oh, well, and that's totally stuff. like I had, you know, weird. Uh, I had this calcareous algae. It, it kind of grows like a curly worm, and I brought that thing to like four different tanks, man. And you don't see it on 
you know, you, it's a, just a really rare algae. It's a calcareous algae. It's like a white spiral looking thing, and it's green. It has green around it. Well, it's it's white in the center, and it has green that grows around it. Mm -hmm. um, and you just don't see them a lot. Uh, and I, I, you know, I could have came in on frags, but nah, man, it came from tank to tank to tank to tank because it would pop up about eight months into the new tank, you know, and mm -hmm. it would just grow somewhere. So, uh, yeah, definitely have transferred some stuff from tank to tank. No, which good and bad. But it does make yeah. starting a new tank up really quick and easy. Yes, so, most definitely. Definitely um, has its thing. All right. So, so I, I'll probably just do that same approach. Uh, there's some really cool bacteria. I'll definitely try. Um, there's the Microbacter Start from Brightwell. Mm -hmm. um, maybe do Dr. Tim's. Uh, but mm -hmm. I think the the Brightwell or I'll do the Fritz Turbo Start. Yep. One of those two. Um, and then just just give it time, yes. man. I'm just I'm I'm a fan of patience. Uh, and I find that that first four to six week is a very good, like, when you're really excited and you really want to put stuff in there, mm -hmm. it's good to take that time because force yourself to not impulse buy, you know? Like, it really forces you to chew over what you're going to put in this tank. Um, and that's just the biggest, probably, advice anybody can get from this conversation is plan the damn tank. Is plan what you're going to do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, going to the fish store and just impulse buying stuff is, like, the worst, worst thing um, because generally speaking, you're not set up or ready for it, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, this is true. It's true yeah. because you don't know if your tank's ready for it. Um, so you talked about the Fritz and the Brightwell. So I used Fritz before my last tank, the 900 yeah. Turbo Start. Worked really well. I'm using the Brightwell on this tank as well. So it's trying all the different ones out. So for this one, I'm kind of doing like a hybrid of your take it slow approach because mm -hmm. I had the rocks in a brute container since before Christmas, basically there cycling. Go, yeah. And then I would just dump in and feed it some ammonia once in a while. I did that, and then actually yesterday or the day before, I dumped in about 0.8 to 1 ppm worth of ammonia just to see, you know, how long it would take to eat it all up and process so it just, just to oh, feed it. Oh, to see it, like how efficient it is. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, I've I've always done the approach of, like, I've used both live rock, um, transferred rock from another tank, and then also cured uh, dead rock or dry yep. rock, like a clean rock. Mm -hmm. Um I think with the clean rock is like the longer you can get that stuff alive and soaking, the better. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's just you know you're gonna have a stronger foundation uh, when you actually do need to rely on it in your tank. Yep. So I definitely say if you're going a dry rock route, just you know give it the time, dump bottled bacteria in there, mm -hmm. um, and let it do its thing. You know. Uh, now the other gonna, go ahead. The other thing is though, you if you have your bacteria in there. You also need to feed it, right? So whether you're oh, yeah. ghost feeding it to like fish food or an ammonia source or something, you need to give it food or it's going to die off over time. Yeah, the thing with fish food is I think you get you you know you get your phosphate and mm -hmm. other things in the tank that just fuel algae growth. Um, yeah, and then oh. you know yeah. other methods. You just have to be kind of specific with the ammonia. I think um, in terms mm -hmm. of how much you put in the fish tank, you can't do too much. Yeah, you got to test. But yeah. um, for sure. So you have to test. You're going to do it. But that way you get less of the other stuff. Um, the stuff I'm trying this time is the Brightwell branded one. And mm -hmm. they actually do have a bit of a nitrate and phosphate mixed with ammonia to help feed the bacteria more, which is interesting. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. So far, no, so good. I mean, I know it's it's part of, well, mm -hmm. you know, nitrogen and phosphorus. It's part of a lot of sort of natural processes. Yep. Um, so it's um, it's neat to see that it's like a sort of multi-state or multifunctional uh fishless cycle you know mm -hmm. type additive that's neat I never mm -hmm. that. um this mm -hmm. might be a good question for you how often should you ghost feed the rock in a brute can like if you're pre-cycling it oh, gosh man uh i do like every two weeks really yeah? not okay. not very often maybe once a week if i'm really you mm -hmm. know it's not i got a lot of water a lot of good rock it doesn't smell funky i, I go based on smell a lot yeah uh, as long as it still smells sweet and salt watery and not getting funky on me mm -hmm. um then yeah I'm, I'm okay doing a little bit once a week uh, but gosh, man, in days past, filled up a brute trash can, put rock in it, put water in it, threw the, um, the pump on, mm -hmm. dropped in a frozen cube of water, put the lid on and walked away. Yeah. A couple weeks later, came back, did the test or did a, a water change out, did some tests to see kind of where things were at, put a little bit more food in another couple weeks. And then, you know, I was put in a fish tank mm -hmm. and it worked great. I mean, it worked great. It was like instant alive and cycled, no ammonia problems, transferred like, I don't know, probably 15 fish right into that new tank. Um, and it had some rock from before, but all new sand. And then, you know, a, a brute trash can, you know, full of rock. Uh, it worked well. It mm -hmm. worked instantly. Nice. That's perfect. Um, okay. Someone else is asking, how about water changes on the can? I didn't bother doing any. 
The only reason I think you'd need to do one is at the end, if you have lots of like nitrates and stuff yeah. or phosphates built up in the water, then I would. Um, yeah. Personally, I didn't use any of the water for my cycled can. I just put the, the rock into my tank with all new water, so I didn't transfer any of those nutrients in. Just the cycled yeah, rock. Yeah, no, that's here. probably a good approach. I never use the, the rock water ever, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but I have done water changes out of there, especially when it... Smells funky. So I did this, yeah, when it smells funky. That was a, a result of, uh, I think, too much ghost feeding. Mm -hmm. um, but I did it one time where I cycled this rock for, I don't know, three months, four months. It was just the way that it worked out. I was um, doing some video work and had the tank plans. And I was just like, okay, I'm only need cycled rock. I don't know how I'm going to transfer these tanks yet. But I had a couple tanks to break down and transfer into two new tanks. I was like, I'm going to need rock. So I just mm -hmm. cycled it. And I mean that was great. It I mean it worked out fine. Um, I think there was like I said there was a one point where I think uh, we had doubled up, like multiple people had doubled up on the ghost feeding, mm -hmm. um, and then it was cat. And it didn't really think about it until uh, I took it off and I was like, whoa, yeah. So that's the only time I do a water change is when, like you said, high nutri high nutrient level before you want to put it in your tank. It's probably good to to do that water change maybe a day or something before you transfer it out, or mm -hmm. just uh just dip the rock in you're gonna have a minimal transfer of nutrients if you're not using the water you know yep no nope. makes sense okay so new new tank um i know you're a big fan of the natural ways so sump just giant refugium any other gear yeah, stuff so you're planning? this was something i want to talk about um i do want to do this giant refu have this like idea i just it was kind of a recent thing i came up with but okay so this is the the trying to get around the um, be a responsible reef tank owner do your water changes have a clean looking fish tank um, but also a balance with like, you know, time and me enjoying this tank. Um, mm -hmm. I've said that it's, I've always worked in, in this hobby. So I've had like a huge part of me, my work life is playing with fish tanks, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I've always had one at home and it's never been, uh, to the point where like it's a chore or, you know, I'm the last thing I want to do is, you know, look at my fish tank. Like I still love them and I still want to love them going forward. Mm -hmm. So with this one. I think I want to do a small display, a big fuge, so I can still have like uh, my cool equipment and I can play with things and try different things out. Um, I want to do, mm -hmm. and then like maybe I'll plumb the display like I don't know through the other side of the wall or something and display it in my living room and then nice. have all the equipment you know like hidden away. I don't know, mm -hmm. um, but I just want to do a small tank that's maybe half the size of the fuge, and mm -hmm. then just do this ginormous refugium or ginormous sump with a big refugium probably mm -hmm. do like a, a remote refugium where it's isolated not you know within the baffles of the sump yeah uh so i'm like a huge fan of clean sumps like i would clean yeah, my his sump. own chamber for yeah so like yeah. equipment in one mm -hmm. fuge in the other you know and it's just nice. completely separate i can cycle raw water through it sort of mm -hmm. on its own cycle get pods i don't have to go through a ton of pumps or anything like that mm -hmm. um, and then the equipment stays clean it's true you know like Minimal detritus, I can get it on a, um, you know, the filter rollers. I'm, I've am i come around to filter rollers, uh, so I'll probably use one of those. Um, yeah, if if I can, I mean, if I can get a refugium that's strong enough, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, a few Janus scrubber, I don't know, we'll see. Yep. Uh, like, if I can get something strong enough, like, I might stay away from any mechanical filtration mm -hmm. um, because that stuff does feed your tank, and it does, you know, I mean, there's mm -hmm. a lot of it benefit does. that could have. Well, you know, your phytoplankton and your natural food chain in the tank, like this stuff is the fuel of it. And so I feel like if I can get to the point where I'm exporting enough nutrients with, a, you know, maintenance schedule and some natural filtration, mm -hmm. probably bypass that. But we'll see. Well, if you think about it, if you have a big enough refugium, that's going to be a mat. Like all all that chadle together is going to be like a massive sock in a way. Right? Sure. So, but yeah. you're going to have to clean that chain once in a while because it's going to capture yeah. basically everything. Well, and you're pulling macro out. Like ideally, you're pulling it out every couple of weeks. I mean, you want this stuff just growing, you know. And so, mm -hmm. especially in a big one, I'll have a nice big light on it. Nice, you know, some good flow through there. Um, maybe different species. Like maybe I'll do. So this is a cool thing. So mixing macro algae is sort of terrible. Like you'll see a lot of mm -hmm. sums where you look in there and the you know the dreaded calerpa. Nobody talks about calerpa anymore. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, you'll see four or five different species, and they're kind of just matted and growing on each other. And then within that, there's a ton of hair algae. Mm -hmm. um, successful refugiums are not like that. Um, in most situations, you'll have just a giant ball of Cato, or you'll be growing strictly a Calerpa that's isolated mm -hmm. by itself. 
Um, and then there's this idea of like doing um, a Xenia run, like a Xenia refugium or scallops even, clams, like any sort of filter feeding mm -hmm. um, invertebrate. Have a ton of them in one chamber and use that as a filter. And so mm -hmm. that's just another one of those ideas that I always want to do. And having this big fuge where I can plumb off loops, uh, excuse me, having this big sump, <laughs> I can plumb off loops to that. Um, and have these sort of closed, isolated systems. Maybe I'll have a Xenia one and a and a Cato fuge and a Clerpa fuge and a Clam fuge, mm -hmm. all separate, you know, uh, individual loops off of that sump. No, that's a good way to do it. Another thing I think would be cool, and I think you might appreciate it, is doing like a nice display refugium. Like I know you said for effectiveness, yeah. have your massive either Clerpa or Cato, but there's so many cool macroalgies. Now you're not going to yeah. get as much output but i've seen like those little shaving bushes and like the dragon's breath like you can make a really cool like planted refugium style tank yeah. with like pipe fish and other cool creatures and which would be a cool way to do as well shaving, on there. i think it's shaving brush yeah um Oops. they're cool looking uh yes yeah, so a, a macro algae um display tank is really neat i did it i've done it twice now um yeah. it's <laughs> It's more on the like keen to a planted tank because of the pruning and I mean that stuff is aggressive, man. It really mm. reminds me it's like almost alien like when yeah. you know the there's a name for them, but the anchors, uh, they come and they like spread on the rock and they just get into crevices and they're so gnarly. Mm. Um, you really gotta be you, you gotta you gotta keep up. grab the you know you gotta you really gotta do it. So every mm -hmm. week you should be in there. Like if you see even one little shoot coming off in the wrong direction or you don't want it to grow, clip it. Because if you don't, it seems like overnight that th that rock's just gonna be covered, and you're gonna have to rip it all apart, and it's just gonna be a pain in the butt. So what uh, you're saying is a lot of work, like a high-tech plant to tank. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> all right, fair uh, enough. But I love them, man. At the end of the day, it's super cool, it's super natural. It looks neat. Um, I had a tank. It was my favorite tank for a long time. Um, before my move, I want to say like last year, mm -hmm. uh, before I moved, it was it was the coolest tank, and I was playing in that thing all the time. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, another kind of funny thing that I think of now, too, is so much of our gear has gotten so much better. So now I think more, more people are over filtering a tank rather than under filtering it like it used to be. So what do you do you think you're going to do a bunch of different gear? Or you're going to stick to the whole keep it simple method and just the yeah. bare minimum to get the job done? Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely stick to minimal equipment always. Um, I, mm -hmm. I mean, if I can get. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty confident. If I've got this big huge space, I'll be able to export nutrients. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a calcium reactor fan, so I'll definitely see a reactor. I'll definitely see a skimmer. Yep. Um, I'll have my dosing pump. Oh my! My baby's coming back. My kid's coming back. I gotta pause. Hold on, yeah. real quick. No problem. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. It, it is. It is really funny. It still, this is make me laugh. The whole like over filtering, right? Everyone's like, oh, I got the nutrients down, and now everyone's like, oh, I gotta dose nitrogen and phosphates to my tank again. So it does go to show how much equipment has improved over the years and how more effective it is. So there is something nice to be said about keeping it simple. I I have a challenge with that because I'm like a total gear junkie. Um, even on the new build, like I'm thinking about trying the calcium reactor and dosing. So kind of both of them on the same tank, which I think will be kind of kind of cool. So mainly because dosing a big tank can get expensive for how do you have the calcium reactor so if you let that do you know 80 percent of the work and you can just tweak the little bits based off your testing and your levels which would be kind of a cool way to do it. so i think that has a lot of potential and i'm really curious to see how well it works so new potential thing i want to try uh a couple of questions are waiting uh so battle 611 i use home kit smart plugs for everything i have a buddy that, i have a few friends that do that actually they really use the the smart plugs is basically their tank controller so it works well for like timers or alexa turning stuff off and on so kind of yeah, a good cheap controller i use smart plugs they're yep. cool but i don't know i never had expensive smart plug so that could mm -hmm. probably be the case uh, i always had cheap yeah. ones but, um they worked i mean they're cool I ended up collecting them, like use them for Christmas lights after that. Hmm. And I just remember them busting on the, like had them on a little tank. And I was like, eh, I don't, it's not reliable enough. Use them for Christmas lights. They stopped working halfway through that. And so I kind of gave up on them, but I think yeah. it's just a matter of buying a quality one, you know? It's true. I, I've actually started using them for all types of stuff. Like I have two lights on the side of my monitors, plus the camera. That's all yeah. a smart plug. Instead of me flicking everything on for the live stream, you can go on your like, phone. The Alexa command and everything. Goes oh through. yeah, the Alexa command. Yeah. That's a yeah. new thing in my household. Like my kids wanted them, and so like I was kind of like, "What is the point of these things?" Like I just Google's at my fingertips, you know. And uh, 
uh, home automation, I, I can see the benefit. I can mm -hmm. see where people like it, you know? Um, just like refugium lights, like stuff on timers. Or, you know, maybe you, you know, turn off your skimmer for water change. That, that stuff right. makes sense. The only downfall is you don't have an easy way of doing an input, so you can't really trigger stuff based on actions. So it's basically sure. just off you telling it to happen. Right. So you're still um, the controller. For, for maintenance is nice. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. Like, you know, stop pumping water <laughs> and it'll do it. So that's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. But you could even have like one smart plug for like maintenance mode, which turns off your heaters, your ATO. Oh, right. That could yeah. all be plugged into one power strip, right? So this could be like, oh, turn the tank in maintenance mode. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you could do lots of cool stuff like that. I always do a, you know, like the, the feed hold. I mean, is essentially what I'll use is I'll just use a feed hold for like, and I mm -hmm. program the feed hold to be very similar to the maintenance mode. Yeah. Um, just cut the return off all the way. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, with all these DC pumps now, you can actually just lower them down or, like, lower the speed of the pumps to where mm -hmm. there's still some movement and the food kind of gets distributed where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, classically, I'll just cut everything off, um, give the skimmer a delay so it comes back on with some, you know, back down to its normal level. Yep. Um, and it tends to work for me. I'll just do a long feed hold, too. Like, it takes... The way that I feed, man, I'm feeding constantly and a ton mm -hmm. of food. So, um, oh. I, yeah. I put my tanks in feed mode for a good 45 minutes or so. Yeah, because... I was going to say, I set them for anywhere from 30 to an hour. Mm -hmm. First, I think longer is better because I don't really want to just throw all my food in the filters. I want it to stay floating around my water column so the corals and all the yeah. creatures have more chance to eat it. So you're getting yeah. more, more benefit from it. And there's some benefit to having an internal power head running. So your return's off. But yep. your internal your internal power head is running. Generally, I'll have mm -hmm. one and just turn it way down because mm -hmm. I think there is some benefit to that. Uh, oh, just distribute yeah. it to corals. A lot of times you end up with different um, different niches of where the fish feed. So mm -hmm. you have like your top level, your sort of mid swimmers, your rock hoppers. You got your sand people, or you know, your your fish in the sand, not people. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and so, like giving that food to those fish uh, is important. You know, true, definitely is. Uh, I like Bluetooth power strips for my frag tanks. Huh, I haven't tried Bluetooth yeah. ones yet. Bluetooth nice. is a neat one. Um, I'm mm -hmm. excited to see what uh, what some of these companies are doing with yep. Bluetooth. It'll, it'll be neat to see. Um, I mean, you don't get the connect. You know, you don't get the the Wi-Fi connectivity and remote and whatnot. But mm -hmm. man, the connection to it is super fast, and it's just yeah. you know, there's none of this uh, having your network drop out on you, having to find the network. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, gosh, even going back to early days where, like, I have to open your modem and, you know, <laughs> port, port forwarding and all that stuff that I know nothing mm -hmm. about. Um, With um, one thing that I've actually been impressed with, I've been playing, because I haven't been beta testing Ecotext new Mobia stuff for a while, so that's yeah, all yeah. Bluetooth-based. Is it? So, yeah, so you open the app, you know, within 10 seconds, it finds all my bazillion bits of equipment throughout the house, and psh, there's everything you control all right to there, so that's pretty cool that's how neat. that works. Yeah, it's cool, and it's fast. I've seen it work mm -hmm. a couple times. I haven't uh, haven't put my hands on the Mobius one yet, but um, just that, that Bluetooth connectivity is is nice, man. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm curious to see how they, they're going to, because obviously we're going to want, you know, we're going to want some sort of remote monitoring or alert system, so uh, mm -hmm. I'm curious to see how they do that, you know. Um, I mean, that's essentially like a reef link. Uh, device, you know, that can yep. connect to the internet. So, curious to see what they do because I know um, maybe the reflink will be a bridge later. I don't know. Yeah, It'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm maybe curious. It's a too. new bridge. Yeah, I'm curious to see how this goes because the alerts are nice, man. Having the you know the, uh, the notifications on your phone is just it's it's just peace of mind, really. Like I've never had anything where I you know had to drop everything I was doing and drive home. Mm -hmm. um, but I have been on like long trips and stuff, and you know, get the text from my fish tank. It's like, ah, oh, it's good. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know? So speaking of which, do you run controllers on your tanks? Do you think yeah, someone needs I mean, a controller? A controller definitely changed my life uh, years ago. Um, it was so. So yes, I mean, I don't think you have to, but I think it. What it does, and this is just like the glass cleaner and any of those things that make your your life easier and ATO auto water change is it makes the hobby more pleasurable. So it gives you that time to focus and relax on the things that you probably like the most, which is like mm -hmm. buying cool stuff, mm -hmm. growing that in your tank, showing it off to friends and, you know, teaching your kids. Well, for me, that's part, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, just, just talking about the tank and, and working with it. And so when you're having to spend, uh, let's just say like a 90, 10 sort of time ratio where it's like 90% of your time is, doing stuff you just don't like about it, you're eventually going to neglect it or fall out of it. So I think doing everything you can to eliminate some of those mundane things 
is only going to benefit you and your tank in the sense that you're more apt to do what you should be doing. Your tank's going to probably look better. You're going to mm-hmm. last in the hobby a lot longer, and you're going to enjoy your time here a lot longer. So, so yeah, man, uh, definitely like controllers, but mm-hmm. to a certain to a certain extent. Like, I'm not uh, super control. Like, I'm not like a super control freak, so to speak. Um, I don't get real complicated stuff, but I do like having you know pH control. I like having protections for the temperatures. Uh, I like having just notifications sent off that you know temp and pH are good. Um, mm-hmm. Haven't run like a Trident type ALK monitoring system, so that's an exciting one. Uh, I'll go down the mm-hmm. road. I know you like it. You have both the uh, Alcatronic and the Dostronic, right? Uh, I do. I haven't actually hooked up the Dostronic. It's sitting there waiting for me to get going on this nice. tank. Nice. But I got the Alcatronic and the Reef Bot for testers. Oh, there you go. The Reef yeah. Bot's another new one. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I'd be curious to try that, but I never have. I've never gone down the road where I thought I needed it. Um, but for the Calcium Reactor, it's nice to have, too, because you have that protection knowing... Uh, especially when setting up and dialing in, you know, you can have the dual pH monitoring so you know what's going on. Um, and then, yeah, all the timers, you know, it's nice to have all the timers in one place. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the thing is, is, like, we're kind of, like, moving in this direction where all this equipment has onboard control. So yep. it's, like, uh, and not everything and not, you know, I know there's huge benefits to having that live monitoring and advanced control and sort of, like you said, mm-hmm. action-based commands, like, uh, or event-based commands. Like, those things are... They're nice to have, They're but nice, do, you, yeah. do you think someone needs them, or just nice to have? No. I think if you had a, a controller that's got some nice digital timers in it, mm-hmm. um, you know, a, a temp and a pH probe connection, I think you'd be fine. I, you know, mm-hmm. I don't think you need uh, a ton of advanced uh, programs to be successful. I mean, yeah. I've been successful without them. It just, those days were painful because... I dreaded maintaining the tank sometimes, you know, like I'd be tired or, you know, you felt like you couldn't go away and the tank would be looking awesome for three months. And you think back like, man, I'm kind of, you know, I spent these last three months just busting my, you know, my ass for this fish tank. And um, I love it. It's cool, but I don't know that I can keep this up for the rest of my life. So, Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, just finding that happy balance. Okay, so for controllers, if you only bought one heater controller, super basic, but that's the most common thing to cause an issue with your tank. Yeah. A heater controller. Um, okay, now talking about making life easy, making stuff easy, making maintenance easy. Yeah. Um, tank height and making your tank easily accessible to yeah. maintain so you'll actually do it. Because the pain yes. in the butt, you're not going to do it, right? Yeah, no, totally. Uh, this is a lot of the stuff we're talking about is that whole make your life easy. but uh, It is. You know, the, this is goes into the what I said earlier about planning your tank. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's happened to me quite a bit too. Is like you just, you know, you, you find a tank for say it's a good deal, or a lot of times you set up tanks not planning them. You're just like, oh, I got this cool tank. Or you, the first tank I ever bought was I really wanted a fish tank, but what I was buying, I had no idea. I just went in. I had you know some money in my pocket. I was 14 years, 15 years old. Nice. You know, with a hundred dollars in my pocket, which was you know like felt good. I could buy something cool with this. Um, and yeah, I just walked out with a, it was one of those Marineland Eclipse systems, mm-hmm. sort of the all-in-one. You know, uh, it looked real nice. It was the twenty. I want to say it was the twenty-gallon tall. It's like it was their only glass one because they made a bunch of acrylic ones, and then they had the glass one. And so I bought mm-hmm. the glass one. I um, was real proud of it, but I didn't plan where that. I mean, the tank ended up on my desk, like where I, you know, did my homework and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, um, and then I had one on my nightstand. And it's like these are places where you should never have a fish tank. I mean, it's okay for a little five gallon or something, but mm-hmm. I mean, talk about a pain in the butt, man. I had water all over the floor. Uh, it was just, you know, it was on the second level of my parents' house, where it's just a pain in the. I remember siphoning out through my bedroom window, like out the window <laughs> down into the yard. <laughs> um, nice. Yeah, like it was uh, so just plan it, man. Make your tank easily, you know, put it in a place where you like it and you're going to love it and you know you can work on it and it's safe, you know. Mm-hmm. Hard, hard floors are nice, avoid carpet, um, easily accessible to some water. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, just being able tall enough to your, – your height is kind of important. So this is one mm-hmm. not a lot of people think about, but, you know, your eye level is kind of where you don't want to be looking up and you don't really want to be looking down. Most people don't, you know. Yeah. this It's eye level, and so that changes from person to person. Um, and so think about that when you're buying your stand and how tall your, your tank is, um, you want to have it where you can view it nicely from where you want to view it, whether it be sitting down or standing up. 
because that mm-hmm. can vary too. Low st- some people like low stands because you know next to their couch or something, just easier viewing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then not so tall where you can't get your hand down to the bottom yeah. um, or across. That was one thing that uh, armpit Ryan- height. Stand up. Yeah. Measure your armpit. That's as tall as your height should be. If it's taller, you're not going to be able to reach everything. Right. There you go. And so mm-hmm. when something drops to the bottom, say an algae magnet that doesn't float, or you need to pick up a coral or plant a coral, or you need to clean it or do the sand, like it's just all that much more of a pain in the ass because you got to get a step stool out, or you're getting your sleeves all wet, or mm-hmm. you just don't do it. So all of yeah. those things kind of, you know, uh, just make your life harder. Nope, definitely. Okay. Uh, one I don't think we mentioned earlier, but one thing most people don't think of up front, but you should have um, a refractor meter or oh, yeah. a digital one. Meter. Yeah. Because so, I have one sitting on my desk. Yeah. <laughs> so for reef tanks, mm-hmm. water testing is going to be a big part of your life. Uh, mm-hmm. There's some great technology that's progressed in the last, I don't know, three to four years about digital testing. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I first started, it wasn't, you know, it was just you had pH and, you know, um, the conductivity. But. You know, these digital, like the, the Hannah Checkers, the digital color rimmers, the Reef Bot, the Trident, mm-hmm. um, all the, the alkalinity monitoring devices, all that stuff is sort of a new advancement, and it's great, and it makes your life easy. But let's all be honest, 9 out of 10 people are not going to build their first tank with that. That's so true. Uh, you're going to be water testing with these liquid, sort of old-school liquid titration test kits, and it takes time. Um, but definitely educate yourself on how to do them right because I don't know how many times I've talked to people and you go you go in this like sort of roundabout conversation. Well, what are you dosing and like what was your you know what are your parameters and it mm-hmm. just ends up they're doing the test wrong and it's mm-hmm. like well what was your like test it every day man and call me back you know like I've held buddies like that I'm like dude test every day for five days and call me and then you know or send me a screenshot of your test every day and it's like whoop, 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 whoop. it can't change that much in a day man like. Like, unless you're adding a ton of fresh water, like you're doing that test wrong, and you're mm-hmm. probably fine, you know, because uh, it would be like, so let's just say nines. It would be like two nines, and then you know an eleven and a seven, <laughs> you know, yeah. with alkalinity, and it's just like it's not doing that, man. It's just like you know, it's probably in the zone of nine because that's your most common one. So, <laughs> so we're in the middle. Yeah, just take the time to learn how to do those tests, practice them. You know, practice is a practice makes perfect. So, mm-hmm. um, before you're you have coral. And you have things living. Like, remember, these things rely on you, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, for survival. Sure. So that's, that's important. So uh, being confident in your skills to perform the test and not wondering mm-hmm. is a huge thing. Uh, you know, confidence is key in anything. And so, um, yeah, I would say take the time to get good test kits and learn how to do them. Yep. And be consistent, right? Like the one big thing, if you're doing the drops, there's a little line on it. And when you put water in, it's going to be a little meniscus, that little curve. Yep. Like make sure the bottom of that curve touches the line and make sure you do it the same way every time. Be consistent yeah. with it. That's yeah. The same the way every thing. time is important. Like pressure when you, uh, some mm-hmm. of the bottles don't have meter drops. So yep. the amount of pressure you put on there is huge. Um, mm-hmm. And test though, you want to feel for these things before, when you actually do it, when it matters. So even if you're not dosing uh, any you know major minor elements, like just do the tests anyway, and you can see how your tank acts and how it changes um, without a huge consumption rate. And then as that consumption rate grows with more coral and and you know a stronger, more mature reef, mm-hmm. you're more accustomed to being able to control that change in water chemistry because you've monitored it and seen how it acts for so long. Yeah. Um, because your tanks will like your tank is fairly predictable as long as you you know you're doing the same things like you said as long as you're consistent mm-hmm. um your tank's not going to do all these crazy wacky yep. things you know it's like it's true it, like corals don't necessarily care what your parameters are they just want them to be stable so, like yeah. even even if you're testing wrong right test consistently wrong like okay. just keep yeah. it stable right that's yeah. at the end of the yeah. day that's what really matters they just don't yeah. like the swings and the changes from you they're like oh this is off to correct it oh this is off correct it right this Whatever you can do to keep it in the same zone consistently is going to turn to a happy tank long term. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Don't don't go chasing numbers. Exactly. Okay. Or, another or waterfalls. Uh, another thing a lot of people don't think of uh, RODI unit lifesaver. You can hundred yeah. percent go pop in a dollar or two in the machine and all buckets around, but that does get old fast. And there's going to be times that you're going to need to fill up your ATO and you're going to be lazy and you don't want to do it. Being able to walk over and turn a valve and make water at home is very nice. Yeah, man, I said earlier, RODI, it's like the unsung hero that doesn't get enough credit. It's true. They're, they're just awesome. They just make your life easy, man. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can you can get great drinking water for your family, so just yep. tap off the RO line. Um, Helped a buddy do that last night? 
Yeah. Actually. Oh, and you know something with RO is educate yourself about the filters. There's tons of information. Uh, BRS has like extensive library of videos about uh, RODI stuff, um, like way beyond information I ever thought I needed to know. But it makes sense. Like learning about chloramines, learning about how to know when to change your filters, what exhausts the particular filters. Like there's different, um, there's different things in the water that will exhaust a DI quicker than. Uh, so like your DI may exhaust at a different rate than mine, even though our TDS is the same, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, and so just educating yourself about that kind of stuff will save you money because you won't be changing your pre your filters prematurely and you won't be letting it go too long to where you get contaminants into the tank. Yep. Um, so that's a good thing with RODI. I definitely need one, and I would say the first thing is study the filter changes and what each filter stage does. Mm -hmm. uh, the plumbing is kind of straightforward. That's pretty easy. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just understanding those filters and why you have a pressure gauge, why yep. you measure TDS. Um, understand those things. No, nope, that's good. It's and super, even just the, the flow of how it works, because a lot of people get confused and hooking them up for the first time. Yeah. So it generally will go through your pre-filter, and then it will go through your carbon block, and then it will go into your membrane, and then out of the membrane will go into your DI. Right. So Sometimes, you... and when you have the different stages, so Devin just described a four-stage system. Mm -hmm. um, you've got three vertical cartridges, one on top. Mm -hmm. um, and you talk about a five and a six stage, um, you're going to have additional canisters in line on the bottom, and then mm -hmm. uh, the, the six or seven stage will have the additional TFC membrane, which is the horizontal one. So those things, um, they have a specific order that they have to go in, like the, the, the plumbing diagram, so to speak, or the order that the water flows through these things is specific. Mm -hmm. And if you just do it, you install it yourself, you understand how that operates, it makes understanding everything else a lot easier, the, how the filters work and why you need to change, uh, you know, sediment and carbon every six to 12 months. And then everything else can last, you know, 12 months or longer. Mm -hmm. um, it's just because of the way they work and what those filters do, you know? Mm -hmm. Nope. So true. Now the other way too, there's a way to hook them up so you get more water output. And there's another way to be more efficient with water, right? Where you could feed sure. the wastewater to the second membrane. Yeah, your dual membrane. Um, yep. But you know the thing there is, it's only recommended for like, I think levels lower than I want to say 300. You start mm -hmm. to get to levels over 300 TDS mm -hmm. or 300 ppm uh, total dissolved solids. Mm -hmm. You're gonna you're gonna end up with more contaminants coming out of that membrane and getting exhausted by DI. Mm -hmm. You will you will increase the rate at which water is produced. That's for sure. You're going to double yep. it. Uh, mm -hmm. With good, good pressure, you're going to double you know the amount of water you're you're producing per hour or per minute. Mm -hmm. But the downside is is you're going to exhaust your DI is quicker. Yeah. Uh, so there's different situations. You've got like a, a low, fairly clean TDS water. Double it up, man. You get uh you know you get your double production rate. Mm -hmm. You'll have less waste water, and you want to wait as long for water, um, or you're not going to spend as much on filters. But then mm -hmm. You know, you get this higher TDS. You're like, man, I'm going through filters like crazy. Well, it's only going to get worse if you add another filter on there yep. or a second membrane. So um, in those instances is you can double up your sediments. You can double up your carbons. And I've seen double and triple DI units too. So the the, the double DI is nice because it will ensure that nothing gets through. Mm -hmm. The first, first one's going to exhaust quicker. Once that one changes color out, you take the second one, put it in the first stage, put a brand new one in the second stage, and now mm -hmm. you've got this this constant system of never letting anything through. Yep. Um, and then with like your double carbons, they'll last longer and keep the membrane and DI uh, mm -hmm. last longer. Membrane and DI are the most expensive ones, so uh, it just behooves you to maintain <laughs> the, the cheaper the cheaper ones uh, yep. as, as they should be changed. Yep. No, that makes sense. A good good way to think about it too, right? Yeah. And they're just continuously having those dual cartridges. I have it for DI, I don't have for cartridge for um carbon, but it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it's uh and that's all based too. Like there's nothing it's, it's all based on your local water. So like mm -hmm. uh starting out I can to be honest, most of us don't know what the heck's in our tap water. Uh and the only way to get it is really like like I've done this um you can call your local municipality whether it be and a lot of times mm -hmm. they'll have reports that they can send you. Um, I don't know if it's like a law or something required they give you, but they've the two that I've called and asked for the reports mm -hmm. were really nice about it. Yep. And then I sent off like an ICP test for it, um, and that's the only way you're gonna you're gonna know what's in your water. Um, and it's just something that most people aren't gonna do before building a fish tank. So, um, yeah, stuff you think of afterwards. <laughs> yeah, it's stuff you think of afterwards. So you know, if you're really wanting to do this right, is that might be something smart is. 
go down that road of finding out what's in your tap water. Um, educate yourself on how, why, the filters, you know, just like that TDS thing I mentioned. Um, and that will help you make a smart buy mm -hmm. when you're ready to get your ROD out. You'll have nice. the right one right out the gate. You don't have to mm -hmm. deal with replumbing. You're not going to have to deal with a bunch of cartridge changes. You're not going to have to make a bunch of phone calls and say, why am I running out of DI juice all the time? Yep. It costs $30 for a cartridge. <laughs> very, very true. Okay, next question. New tank set up. Are you the quarantine route or are you the throw it in and hope for the best route? Well, I quarantine all my fish. <laughs> that sounded, yeah. Yeah, uh, no, man. I mean, I, I tell people to do it, and you really should. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just, you know, reality is uh, it's not for everybody. Not mm -hmm. everybody Not everybody has two fish tanks. It's just it's going to be the case, man, especially all these nano tanks. Like, most people are choosing a nano tank for a reason. You know, it costs mm -hmm. less. They have the space and mm -hmm. the time of day to maintain something smaller. Yep. Um, Catch-22, because they're harder to keep stable, but, mm -hmm. in, you know, in general – Everything is smaller. You're not going through as much additive, no, as much salt. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not having to produce as much RODI water. So there is just sort of less cost there. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Okay. Quickly answer this question. He goes, if you could only pick one of the reef bot or the Alcatronic, which would you pick? It depends. Sorry, it's answer a chat question. Yeah, that's, uh, that's all you, Devin. <laughs> it, it, it depends why and which you want to test. So for me, Alcatronic pros, is it super cheap and reagent? It's one of the cheapest ones out there. I've been, I have had it for a year and a half, and I'm still using the the same original gallon of reagent. So super cheap to run. That's a huge plus for me. Especially if you have a calcium reactor, you don't really care about calcium. It is what it is. You're worrying about your elk, and you just gotta test magnesium once in a while. Okay. Now the big pro for me for the reef bot is that there's no minimum testing frequency. Every tester out there, they want make you test X number of times per day. So with that, because it's doing a manual tritation test, I can say test once a week, right? Like I don't care to know my phosphates and nitrates every single day. So I have it only test for me on Fridays. So test my mag magnesium nitrous phosphate does that every Friday for me. So I have them, I use them for different use cases. So it depends on your situation and what you're after. Hey, does that ReefBot have an app? Like, can you get a report of your, yeah. uh, yeah, yep. it does. Okay. Yeah, you get a little notification pop up. And yeah, 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 that's what I want. I want like that. I want an SMS text. It's like, here's your parameters. Yeah, so I get that every Friday. Yeah, so, okay. I've had it. I've had it through uh, the Neptune Fusion, where you know, uh, mm -hmm. or salinity at the time, uh, pH, mm -hmm. um, temperature, and I think that was all. No, I had conductivity as well, or no, ORP. Sorry, ORP. Yep. And you know, you can get those, um, but all that stuff the ReefBot can do, and obviously now the Trident. Uh, mm -hmm. That's exciting. Um, that's definitely something probably venture into with this new tank. Yeah. Not right away, but I see myself having a desire for that kind of stuff. Well, it, it's definitely fun. The thing is, is, it's not cheap. And I constantly get asked about which ones, but they, they each have different pros and cons to me. So it kind yeah. of depends on your situation. And Yeah, no, most definitely. I agree with that. Um, yep. the Reef, ReefBot's a neat one. It's kind of a unique one. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it uses over... There's no special reagents. It uses yep. just over-the-counter test kits. You can use any brand test kit you want. Yeah, I mean, I they like have that. a, a cool list approach. of compatible ones. I mean, but within reason. But there's still a lot of the common stuff. You can yeah. pick what you want to test. But then again, some test kits have more vials, so it takes up more spaces, right? So you got to kind of plan based on how many reagents the kit has bang for your buck type of thing. Oh, you mean inside the bot itself? Yeah. Like, I got you, I got you. Because mm -hmm. it only holds so many uh, reagents. Yeah, like it holds eight vials, right? So yeah, depends on what you want to test. Like I could, like the, for instance, the Tropic Marin... Nitrate kit can also test NO2, so if you wanted, you could test it. Like, I don't bother because I don't care about NO2. I just care about NO3. Yeah. So, so there's all these little trade-off things you got to kind of work out. Sure. So it definitely is specific and up to what you and what you want to do. Um, yep. So what's, uh, so what's going on with you? Are you going to start making out to shows again, or oh, am gosh, I going to see uh, Robert in the flesh one of these days? Yeah, so uh, that's what's exciting about all this and work on social is sort of back getting out in the community, uh, communicating with all my old friends again, and uh, sort of getting my hands wet. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, hopefully I know I'll get out to some trade shows this year, or shows, at least, you know, some... Uh, I don't really have a lot of <laughs> any real local reefer friends here in the Nashville area. Mm -hmm. um, so if anybody's from Nashville wants to reach out and you like reef tanks, please do. Uh, I love a buddy. I spent yes. a lot of time up in this office up here. Uh, so if I'm not fishing, I'm up here. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, definitely reach out. Hit me up on Facebook or wherever. Um, I'd love to have some uh, some local reefer buddies here, especially when I start this build, because that is a huge benefit of this hobby is, you know, the sort of social aspect, trading frags, getting advice, mm -hmm. 
um, you know, go into or like be a part of a local club, do little fish store tours, that kind of stuff. Yep. I enjoy that stuff. So, um, yeah, nice. definitely, definitely want to get into that. Battle uh, six eleven says you should come to the Aquafest party. <laughs> the Aquafest party, okay. <laughs> I gotta Louisiana? go to Aquafest first. Yeah, I gotta go to Aquafest first. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know, but um. Yeah, no, I was in uh, Louisiana a couple weeks ago. It was a lot of fun. So. Yeah, how was that, man? Did you go fishing or no? No, it didn't happen. Maybe next oh, time. Bummer. If you okay. come to the show, me and you will go fishing, okay? <laughs> All right. Deal, we'll make man. it happen. Um, so I don't have any trade shows on the books yet, but yep. I, I do. I, I got to hit a Reef of Palooza, at least one of them. Um, I'll probably hit, you know, Chicago's not far from me, so there's that one. Mm-hmm. But I love the Florida show. It's just awesome, man. They always have a great resort. It's close to a ton of fishing I can do. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know it's the Worldwide Corals crew they just do a bang up job down there so I'm, yeah, I'm, I I lo- I've been to a couple of those uh, the Orlando ones mm-hmm. and they were just awesome uh, you know Reef Stock is another one I've never been to so I'd love to get out there um, Jake Reef Builders those guys are so you know typically awesome and mm-hmm. you know Jake's doing some cool stuff at that studio I'd love to go check it out so there's that yep. um, and my brother lives in Denver he just moved there as well uh, I think about a year and a half ago so make the the whole rounds over there in Colorado would be fun. You know, hit mm-hmm. the show, see my brother. I'm going to get a new nephew next year, so I'll nice. have to go out. I'm gonna, or, well, I guess this year now. Early so congrats. <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited. Mm-hmm. I'll have to go out to Colorado to see that. So. Oh, perfect. Good excuse. Yeah, yeah, time, yeah definitely. Time it all right. <laughs> definitely. But what about you, man? I know you've been kind of, uh, seems like the last Ooh. few years, you're on this circuit of trade shows, uh, it, which is great. That's awesome, dude. I mean, it's how we met, but uh, true. It's what's almost, on your calendar this year? It's almost, almost monthly for a good chunk of the year last year. Attaboy. I know. Uh, so the next one coming up for me in March, so not next month, month after March, is the Niagara Coral Show, which last year went to that one, which was a lot of fun. And then the, Oh, Ni- the Niagara Coral Show. I yep. got you. Okay. Where's that at exactly? Uh, Niagara Falls. It's kind it of is, above so New it York. Is, it's on the East Coast. No, I know that. Uh, I was just saying, like, it's where? In New- oh, yeah. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Is it in like like the town of Niagara, or is it somewhere that's just close yeah, it's, to there? Yeah, it's in the town of it. It was last year. Um, yeah. They're moving to a bigger, fancier venue this year. Cool. So, and there's, I know a couple of the YouTubers are coming down that I'm kind of friends with online too. So it'd be fun yeah. to go hang out. So yeah, man, that's a, a huge thing I miss about this. Is like oh. I feel like I've taken a year off, man. Um, how, how far is Niagara from you? Come on down. <laughs> uh, that one's a bit. I would I would drive to Louisiana before Niagara, and not anything to do with either of the mm-hmm. shows or anything. Just the it's a little bit too far. Yeah, that's um, fair. I mean, I have to like, I like road trips. So if I could like load up the fam and, you know, go see the city. And uh, I, I, I've always wanted to visit sort of like upstate New York and the wild side of New York. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it might be something on the bucket list eventually, but um, probably that's, not this year. That's fair. All right. Next year. Yeah. Um, next year. Yep. So that would be cool. So that'll be a good show. i uh, going to do that one. And I got, pretend- actually, speaking of inappropriate reefers, you mentioned earlier, he might be coming yeah, if he can okay. swing it. And nice. I know Michael from Aaron's Aquarium's coming too. So, and Mark from Milo's Reef, I think, was coming to that one. So there'll be a few of us there. So it should be a lot of fun. Nice, nice, it. nice, nice, nice. Yep. That's cool. Uh, Aaron, doesn't he live in the UK? He does. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. So, so we'll have a nice diverse crew there. So it should yeah, be pretty good. Yeah. And then uh, Moki, I want to say Moki's back east. Yeah. He lives back east, right? Up um, there he's somewhere in the middle. I can't remember where he's exactly from, but oh, okay. I know he's going to try and make it too. So it should be cool. It'll be fun yeah. to hang out with everybody. No, that's awesome, man. That's yep. a huge thing. Uh, mm-hmm. The community is just so cool, especially this creator content community that's just, you know, growing mm-hmm. and there's just all kinds of people in it and stuff. It's like, it's neat to, to sort of have that, you know, I don't know, friendship circle, something that yeah. didn't exist years ago, you know? That's true. I've met so many people online, which is cool. Um, So he was just asking where is Niagara, or when is it rather? That mm-hmm. one is March 21st and 22nd. Oh, so that's like an early one. It's like the first yep. one. So that's, that's my first show of the year. And then month after that one in April is going to be in Louisiana. That, and that's for Aquafest. So that's kind of going to be like a blended saltwater freshwater show, which oh, I have yeah. never been to one of those. So that would be kind of cool to do. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's neat, man. I like the planted tanks. I will mm-hmm. probably have some sort of... I like the idea of a vivarium. Um, That'd be cool to do. It's just neat, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. and I, I would want it more for like bromeliads and the plants. Yeah. I just, uh, yeah, I love that kind of stuff. So it'd be cool I definitely to do see that in my future. <laughs> you should do one where it's like fish on the water, and you have plants all growing up. The little waterfall, and like just do the whole. Yeah, man, the whole thing. That'd be cool. Some dart frogs and everything. Some lizards. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I saw a neat tank that uh, recently. Um, that was called, like I'll call it the split level. Um, I'm not really sure, but the innovative marine one. That's half. Okay, and there half. you go. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure if we could, if it's out yet or not, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's like a split level, so it's half and half. It's got two. Mm. 
it's a 20 gallon each one's a 10 gallon cube mm-hmm. um each one it's an individual aio system and it's like man eh, that's kind of weird is it novel is it not but no man with this everybody loving the planet and the saltwater tanks i think it's awesome uh, when done right yeah i think it'd be mm-hmm. cool uh, i would just be worried about like salt getting into the freshwater one but um you know. dose aquarium salts maybe there's something to it <laughs> yeah I, I mean you can i think that's just straight sodium chloride but, <laughs> probably uh, or, i don't know it has magnesium in it too mm-hmm. it's like a, um epsom salt i think yeah. is what it's similar to but um, even for like a coral and a fish quarantine tank or something i don't know there's tons of cool uses you could use for it yeah that was kind of it's that's a good idea like little quarantine <laughs> that's thing. what i was thinking it'd be perfect for that yeah you can have like your little but then you see then you're staring at your like pvc pipes and stuff yeah uh, we th- never finished that thought about quarantine no, um, yeah, that, that that could be a whole another rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, okay, because I like what you did. You did something mm-hmm. that's awesome that I'm gonna copy, which is use an old all-in-one tank. You betcha. I have yeah. right beside me, so that is awesome. I feel like a crazy fish man because I got a tank on either side of my desk, but <laughs> I, I got two, two yellow tanks currently in quarantine. So this is the first time I've done a full proper quarantine. So yeah, and trying her out. So far, so I don't good. Know, the the idea of using it, like a lot of us, like when you get to a tank where you're building your second and third tank. It's really likely you're going to have an all-in-one tank in there somewhere. Or mm-hmm. you can just go get one for, you know, under some coral bucks. for it. Yeah, and so, like, yeah, there you go, trade coral. Mm-hmm. Um, and the all-in-one's perfect. It, like, lends itself perfectly to a quarantine. You don't mm-hmm. want to spend a lot of time on it. You're not going to have a ton of nutrients, so the lack of filtration power isn't a huge issue. Yep. Um, you can easily keep it clean. It's don't have any extra equipment. You can tuck it away nice. Mm-hmm. Um, I dig that, man. That's a good tip. I know and there's probably plenty of people that have done it before, but um, the one I, I'm I like using the is the old Red Sea, so it basically has a has lid a on it, has so there's lid. next to no evaporation. So I haven't even bothered nice. with an ATO because it just doesn't need yeah. it. And you can't it doesn't lose, evaporate. You know the finicky, scared fish you get right out of the bag. You know you're not going to run into like the jumpers on the first night. You know, mm-hmm. man, I hate that. It happened to me with firefish. Man, I had a oh. hell of a time with firefish. Love those mm-hmm. things. Really awesome. But uh, they're just – they're so hard, and they're tiny. So even mm-hmm. if you have a screen, like, I, you know, I've had them jump in between, like, you know, hood and overflow spaces. Like, I've just – and the first night when they jump out, it seems like it's it stings all that much more because it's like, man, I still have the receipt. I just got you. You're too <laughs> new. Yeah, like, gosh. That's yeah, um, a bucker. So yeah. mesh traps, right. definitely worth it. That's an actually – Thanks for bringing that up. That is yeah. something that most people don't consider, but put a top in your tank because you're going to end up buying fish or jumpers and you're going to lose them if you don't. So keep yeah, them in. that's one thing that I don't do and I should do as mm-hmm. I say, not as I do uh, <laughs> in this instance because like screen tops are ugly, man. I like to stick my hands in the tank and like interact with the fish. So um, it's something that I just find is – I just inhibits me from enjoying the tank. Mm-hmm. But then again, I've lost some really cool fish to jumping, so if I was more diligent and more accepting yep. of the idea of a screen top, I would you probably just, have hey, not lost those fish. You need to get so. a sleek, sexy screen top that doesn't even really look like it's there. That's the key. <sighs> yeah, well, maybe, yeah. I've seen I, I've seen them, and it's it isn't the way they look aesthetically. It's like the fact that they're in my way. <laughs> okay. No, that's fair. Uh, that's fair. Okay, you know, so, 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 far, so mm-hmm. far, the D&D top... The jump guard, but the pro one that has the black mesh. That's that's the, Ooh, the black one. Mesh. Yeah, yeah because the white personally it reflects too much and annoys me. The black one it doesn't you don't uh, get all the reflection kinda, from it. It like so it looks like a white spot, more. like a yeah. white spot. Because it just reflects the, the light because it's clear, right? Yeah, Where the yeah. black one it doesn't give you all those reflections. So that's by far my best one. Do you end up with any kind of like sh- shadowing or anything in the tank? Or is it real thin? Nothing noticeable. Yeah, yeah. Negligible. Cool. But, that's my recommendation. That's what's on my logo. I'm going to put the same one on the other big tank because there you go. There you go. Thanks All for right. circling back, man. I wanted to get that thought no out. No problem, buddy. I think I, we got to call her pretty quick, though, because my watch went off about 20 minutes ago. That dinner in the oven needs to come up. <laughs> yeah, no, my, uh, yeah, my, um, my daughter could use my attention. She was, she was napping and woke up and mom's at work. So mm-hmm. I, I should probably get back to business, man. Sounds good. Robert, thank you so much for coming on today, as always. Yeah, Devin. Thank you for inviting me, man. This was fun. We should do this good. regularly. Um, Let's do it every couple of weeks. Everybody, Let's do it up. please, hashtag AskBearsTV.com, mm-hmm. uh, or not .com, AskBearsTV on Facebook. <laughs> uh, join the group. Come talk to me. If you guys need help, it's great. Um, I can say this is uh, there is a possibility that we're going to need some new moderators in the future. Nice. Um, I think we're uh, it's been talked about. So, yeah, if interested in anything like that, uh, please engage with us. Talk to us. Um, you know, that could work out a nice thing. Um, but Beautiful. thank you. 
thank you for joining everybody awesome thanks guys and if you enjoyed it as always hit that like button if you're new subscribe and we'll see you guys on next week's stream Whew.